Hello and welcome. Baker Mayfield was introduced to the Central Florida media today as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' newest quarterback, and I have already gone through since the signing of Baker Mayfield, even before that, when Ian Rapport first dropped his uh, inkling that the Buccaneers would be interested in Baker Mayfield, I've already gone through in a short time the full wave of emotions on Baker. So I started out, I wasn't feeling it. I was like, well, you know, I kind of would rather have Trask play, and well, if Baker comes, he might be good enough to beat out Trask, and then if he beats out Trask, then we won't see what Trask is all about, and if we have Baker instead of Trask, what does that accomplish? I was all there. Then, the Buccaneers signed Baker Mayfield, so then I was forced to give it a little more thought, because I was like, okay, well, now it's kind of a reality. Then we signed him, and I said, wait a minute, this might be actually a genius move. We got him for no money, it's super cheap. And the scenarios I laid out in a prior video on this channel, my reaction to it was, if one of two things is going to happen, right? Either Baker's going to beat out Trask, or Trask is going to beat out Baker. Now, if Trask beats out Baker, then he's for real. Like, because Baker Mayfield, I think we could all agree, is not a bad quarterback by any means. He's a decent quarterback right, in the National Football League. If Trask can't beat him out, he's not the guy. Like, if you can't beat out a decent quarterback, then you yourself are not decent. I mean, this is just logic. If Trask can beat him out, then Kyle Trask is for real because that's no joke. Baker Mayfield, you know, if Trask can beat Baker Mayfield, that's not like beating Jacoby Brissett. You know, that's not like beating Chase Daniel or, or Taylor Heineke, you know, which were some other names that I felt like uh, or Teddy Bridgewater. Those are some other names that I felt like were out there or names that I thought were possibilities. Beating Baker Mayfield is for real. That's a genuine competition. Um, Baker Mayfield, also a guy who is accustomed to being the guy. So, um, you know, Trask beating him out would be a very nice thing to have on the young man's resume. Now, the other scenario, uh, and by the way, this is kind of more so my prediction. It's a scenario, but it's the scenario I think that is so likely it's my prediction. Um, I think, and I guess that segues nicely right into this video. Uh, but I think Baker Mayfield's going to win. I think he's going to beat out Trask for the quarterback competition. I think just think Baker Mayfield's been here and done this, right? He was a walk-on twice in college. Then he got to the Cleveland Browns, wasn't the starter there. Um, then he went to the Carolina Panthers, wasn't originally the starter there. Um, then he went to the Rams and people forget he didn't even start there. You know, he was actually, uh, didn't start his first game. He came in in that game against the Raiders when he had the heroic comeback at the end. He wasn't the starter of that game. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, one, two, three, four, five technically quarterback competitions that Baker Mayfield has won in his life. And if you're telling me that Kyle Trask is going to be the sixth and the first that he loses, then you're telling me things I don't believe. I think you're lying. So I think Baker Mayfield's going to wind up being the starter. Um, and that's no disrespect to Kyle Trask, because I do still believe in Kyle Trask, and I would like to see what he's got. But I just don't think logically that I could put myself out there and say that that's what's going to happen. I think Baker's going to take the job. And if slash when Baker takes the job, I think it's going to play out really favorably for all those involved. Now, there's a couple... Um, reasons for that and and I think uh reason number one I'll start with is just um offensive coordinator Dave Canales um I I think he's a very good what go check out his uh press conference when he got uh, uh you know brought on to the Buccaneers coaching staff check out what he's got to say he's an intelligent guy like the way he speaks like his philosophy like what he's about the scheme fit is fan fantastic for Baker Mayfield. I think he he vibes and gels very well with what the Buccaneers are going to be trying to do next year, if I can read between the tea leaves and kind of get a little bit of insight there. I think Baker Mayfield's a fantastic scheme fit. I think it works. Um, and I think that's a knock, not necessarily even against Trask. It's just a plus for Baker. Um, and I think that's going to work out great. It's going to work out in his favor. Another thing that I think works out really well for Baker Mayfield is Trask doesn't have any sort of a leg up, right? It's a new system for all those involved. So while Baker is going to be learning this offense for the first time, newsflash, so is everybody else. Trask has been in the building for two years, learning Byron Leftwich's offense. So it's not going to, there's no, not going to be any type of carryover. Yes, he may know the guys, right? He may have, uh, you know, had interactions with the people on the team, the players, some of the coaches that are still around. That's fine. But he does not know any of the offense or any of the verbiage or any of the system any better than Baker. You know, that's even footing there, which I think plays to Baker's strengths. Um, 
I also think just experience. I think experience is an underrated thing in terms of why Baker's going to win. I feel like I'm rambling. I'm getting off. Let me stay focused. Let me stay focused. Baker Mayfield gets the starting job. This is the scenario. Baker Mayfield gets the starting job. When that happens, I think Baker Mayfield is, we would all agree, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who wouldn't think Baker Mayfield's a competent starting quarterback in the National Football League, right? Can we take all our potential biases, put them aside, okay? Baker Mayfield is not bad. He may not be great, but he's not bad. He's a competent starting quarterback in the NFL. And the only reason that he's not still uh, is because of the Browns and their decision-making. Now, this is the thing that drives me a little crazy about the NFL. It's a lot of sheep think, right? A lot of people think because someone did something, I have to do it. Well, the Browns got rid of Baker Mayfield, and they went for Deshaun Watson, and that's fine. Do what you want. But that's the whole reason that there's any speculation or doubt about Baker Mayfield. Now, when he was in Cleveland, did people think he was worthy of the number one pick? Well, maybe not. Did people think that he was the face of the franchise, like Patrick Mahomes? I meant to say face of the league. I'm sorry, like Patrick Mahomes. Maybe not. But Baker Mayfield was the franchise quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. He took him to the playoffs. He got a playoff victory. They were almost, they were in a position to beat the freaking Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs. In Arrowhead. With Baker Mayfield. Let's not let any of that slip away. Talented team around him, yes. I mean, it's not like the Buccaneers have a good cast of characters around Baker here in Tampa. Oh, wait, we do. But he was in a position to be, you know, in an AFC championship game. That's a big deal. And it just seems like everybody's forgotten about that because the Cleveland Browns decided to part ways with him. And I'm just blown away because I'm like, well, when have we known? I've been an NFL fan since maybe like, what, 06, 07, something around there. When have we known the Cleveland Browns to be good decision makers? I'm struggling to find a time, okay? They're a bottom-dwelling franchise for a reason. They make bad choices, right? And I'm not saying Baker Mayfield letting him go get Deshaun Watson. It's just the worst choice the team's ever made. But it's just another bad choice in a long line of bad choices because Baker Mayfield, he changed the culture in Cleveland, something that nobody thought could even be done, right? The Cleveland Browns, there's certain teams, okay? And we're Bucks fans, so we know about losing a little bit. There's certain teams that are just at the bottom. And it seems like they'll never come up from the bottom, right? The New York Jets are kind of one of those teams, and, and they just signed Aaron Rodgers. We'll see how that goes. Or they didn't get they didn't trade for him yet, but they're they're getting Aaron Rodgers. We'll see how that goes. Right. The Browns were that team, are that team, have been that team. Baker Mayfield is the only guy who has ever been a Cleveland Browns starting quarterback who wasn't awful who wasn't a bust, who took that team from the depths and rose them up to a playoff victory against the Pittsburgh Steelers, most hated division rival. And that is a, a monumental achievement that no one gives Baker credit for, right? That's a big deal, okay? And I'm not saying Baker Mayfield's career is perfect. I don't think he's perfect at all. But if you're telling me he's a bad quarterback, then you just don't, you're not really paying attention. Okay, because you got to look at things situationally, what he was given to work with and where he was put and what he got out of that spot. And Baker Mayfield taking the Browns on a, on a little playoff run, that's no small feat. That's a big deal. Okay, and Baker Mayfield was there for that and accomplished that. Hats off to him. Um, last year was an ugly year for Baker, right? I don't really feel we need to rehash it. But yes, he was bad in Carolina. You'll get no argument here from me. Bad in Carolina. The problem I have with holding that against him is he got there in training camp. He's behind the eight ball. Still managed to beat out Sam Darnold. And then on a team that fired its coach, fire sailed the whole squad in the middle of the season. Yeah, he got benched. He was playing bad. And, you know, it was ugly. But then he went to the Rams. And very quietly had a nice little mini resurgence. He four touchdowns, two picks in his time with the Rams. I believe he went. If you he went. Uh, if you count the game that he didn't technically start, um, the Raiders game, but he did lead the ninety-eight yard comeback, uh, two minute drill at the end. Um, he went uh, two and three in his time with the Rams, and that was a Rams team that was downright awful. Everybody was hurt, nobody was playing, and they were pretty much out of it and quitting. I think Baker Mayfield. You know, he kind of has a bad, like, 
he kind of gets a bad rap, right? He kind of got screwed over a little bit. The Browns hurt his reputation so much so that nobody wanted to touch him. And that's crazy to me because, you know, this is a guy who was a Heisman winner and a number one overall pick. And I can already hear people screaming at me. Well, so was Jameis Winston. But if you're thinking this is Jameis Winston, then again, I encourage you to like watch some things. Like Baker Mayfield is not a bad quarterback. He's not a joke. He's not a meme. He's none of those things. Baker Mayfield is a solid, reliable quarterback. Now, I don't think he's great. And I don't want this to be like a, oh my gosh, Baker Mayfield is amazing video, because it's not. I don't think that Baker Mayfield is great. I do think that Baker Mayfield is decent. I think that Baker Mayfield is an above average quarterback in the National Football League. And if Baker Mayfield comes in as an above average quarterback in the National Football League into this Dave Canales offense with Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Russell Gage, Kate Otten, Rashad White, whoever else they may add, right? That's a solid squad. It's actually the best team he's ever played with. Now, I know um, Cleveland give you a run for their money because they had Chubb, Kareem Hunt, David Njoku, uh, Odell, even though Odell was actually kind of a negative for for Baker, Landry. Either way, that's a talented team too, so we could debate. But either way, it's one of the best teams. I'm going to give the Bucks the edge, but it's one of the best teams that he's ever uh, had the opportunity to navigate uh, a season with. And for Baker to have that at his disposal – with a coach who's going to run a system that is pretty conducive to what he wants to do. Oh, and by the way, a pretty solid defense. Now, will Tampa Bay's defense be as good as it's been in years past? Will it take a step back? Will it take a step forward? Only time will tell. But it's a solid defense. You expect Bowles to put out at least good to decent, you know, somewhere between decent and very good on the defensive end. The Bucks are going to be no joke with Baker Mayfield. I hate to, like, jump on it so quick, but it's going to be for real. Baker Mayfield is not a bad quarterback. He's a decent quarterback. And what's going to wind up happening, and this is why I had to make the video, because I got a little bit of a mini official prediction, and it felt like sometimes you just get these itches to, like, put out a hot take. And I don't even know how hot this is. This is not, like, steaming pipe and hot out the oven. I, maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I, I don't know what people think. So, so maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But for me, it's a take. And I had to get it out there, because then I could point back to this video after it happens and be like, hey, you seen that? You seen that video over there? I called it. I told you it was going to happen. Listen, Baker Mayfield is going to start. He's going to win uh, the job from Kyle Trask. And when and if that happens, when it happens, he's going to play well. Okay, He's not going to play bad. right? Baker Mayfield has never played bad when he's had a good team around him. He's only played bad football in bad situations. And this is not a bad situation. right? This is a good situation. So he's going to play good football. When he plays good football... Trask will never see the field because, you know, barring injury for Baker, because Baker is going to be winning the job and sustaining the job. And if the defense is playing solid and Baker's playing solid, we're going to win some games. Now, I don't know if we'll win the division, if we'll win the playoffs. We could sneak in as a wild card. That's a topic of discussion for another day. But if that happens and Baker puts forth a solid year, if Baker just plays like one of his better seasons in Cleveland, he's getting paid. By the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Because if an, a decent quarterback can come in here in this Dave Ganali system, right? With Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. What is that going to look like? Because we just saw what Geno Smith did. And if anyone is going to try and tell me. This is another time I'm saying this in this video. But if anyone is going to try and tell me that Geno Smith is better than Baker Mayfield. I'll put the camera down and walk away. Okay, Geno Smith had a great season last year. He resurrected his career. That's great. That's awesome. Before that, he was a stone-cold bust. Okay? And Baker Mayfield is nowhere near a bust. He's a decent quarterback. Geno Smith, nobody would have stood on the podium and said, this guy can play a little bit. Nobody. Nobody even thought he was going to start. They thought they were going to start Drew Locke. When they traded Russell Wilson and got Drew Locke, it was like, oh, Drew Locke's probably going to beat out Geno Smith. No way they go with Geno Smith. And they did. Right? So if Geno Smith can do that, you don't think Baker Mayfield can do something close to, if not better than that? How? How? What's your logic? What's your argument, right? Comparable pieces, but better pieces, I think, in Tampa, because the Seahawks have pretty nice uh, weapons on offense as well, but comparable pieces, right? Baker's a better player than Geno Smith. 
I think the defense is going to be better in Tampa than Seattle's was last year. And you have a situation where, yeah, Baker could step in and do that. And if he does do that, the Buccaneers are not going to hesitate. They're going to give him the bag. Baker's going to get the bag. And that leads us to the prediction. I think that Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback in... What is this? Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback uh, starting the season 2026 is going to be Baker Mayfield. Because Baker Mayfield is going to come in here. There's a reason he came to Tampa and there's a reason the Bucs wanted him. He's going to come in here, win the job, win the hearts of the fan base. Win them all over. Okay. He's going to win over everybody in the front office, everybody in the coaching staff, ownership, and he's going to get paid. And he's going to be Geno Smith or Daniel Jones, a guy who doesn't, he's not going to make crazy, crazy money, but he's going to make starting quarterback caliber money. And he's going to be a guy who had one good year of production with that team, right? Daniel Jones, one good year of production, right? If I'm not mistaken, the man threw 15 touchdowns last year. Daniel Jones threw 15 touchdowns and got paid. Geno Smith got paid, okay? Baker Mayfield's going to get paid. The Buccaneers are lucky to have him. Now, I would, you know, he could get paid by someone else, but I think it'll be similar to Jones and Smith. I think the Bucs will ante up and they will pay him. And he's going to be getting banked next year. And in 2026, he's going to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers starting quarterback. This could be the worst take of all time or a really good one that I can't wait to look back on and tell everybody, I told you so. We'll see. But I do think Baker's going to be the guy. I think this is a very underrated move. And like I said, I've come full circle. All right? I was not pro-Baker. Now I got all my eggs in that basket. And it's not even Easter time. Baker Mayfield, starting quarterback of the Buccaneers for years to come. How it works out beyond this year, you know, that depends on a lot of different things, obviously. Got to keep guys around. We got to see, you know, how everything goes. But Baker Mayfield is going to play well enough to earn himself a second contract in Tampa Bay. That's going to happen. And people forget... The fan base in Tampa Bay, pre-Tom Brady, we're starved, okay? People fell over backwards for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick started two games for the Buccaneers at the start of the 2018 season. Played amazing. Beat the Saints in the Dome. Bucks scored like 48 points. Beat the Eagles coming off the Super Bowl at home in Tampa. Started off with a deep, deep ball touchdown to Deshaun Jackson. And, and just... Then he played a decent game Monday night against the Steelers, but they lost. And people were ready to toss James Winston to the curb, fell in love with Ryan Fitzpatrick. He had the glasses, the beard, the, when he stole Deshaun Jackson's outfit. People were like, this is the guy! We did it! And he was like 34 years old at the time. On his, I don't know, 18th NFL team. And people were in love with him. The second Baker Mayfield starts hurling up touchdowns and being all braggadocious and cocky on the field and having fun on Sundays and making Buccaneers football fun to watch, the fan base will fall in love with him. That's going to happen. Right now, you'll have a couple people who hate him because they don't like what they think he represents. Wait till he starts tossing a rock to Mike Evans and Chris Godwin downfield and you start seeing that this guy can really sling it and can really play. They're going to fall in love with him. The team is going to fall in love with the fact that he's getting us some solid production out of the quarterback position. And it was a, a genius move by Jason Light. If I could comp it really quick to one other move that I think it's going to sync up with. And I, this is totally, it's totally different, but it's the same. I think this move is going to go down for Jason Light as uh, very similar to the Shaq Barrett signing. When they signed Shaq Barrett, came out of nowhere. He was a, a, uh, a cheap like bargain deal in free agency. And then Shaq Barrett exploded onto the scene and became one of the best defensive players on the team. Obviously, he has never quite lived up to that hype since, but that's a separate argument. Baker Mayfield's going to be that. Cheap deal. Nobody really, you know, if it wasn't a quarterback, nobody would even be talking about this guy being on the team in a big way. But he is a quarterback, so he gets that attention. Shaq Barrett, nobody was that excited or nobody really knew, you know, what we had, or, you know, in the midst there. Jason Light definitely did it again. Baker Mayfield's a future starting quarterback. He'll get that big payday, same as Shaq got that big payday, and then, you know, it's yeah, that that's my comp. It's a weird comp. I just pulled it out on the spot, but I do think it makes sense to me. I like it. I'm going to stick with it. Baker Mayfield, your 2026 starting quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You heard it here first, and it's not even 2024 yet. So you're welcome for that nice little futuristic prediction there. That's a hot take for you, I guess. I don't know how hot it is. You be the judge. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think? Are you one of the people you're not a fan? You're like, I don't know. I'm a little skeptical. Or 
Are you like me? And when you go to hide the Easter eggs, you're pulling them all out of Baker's basket because that's where you got all your eggs right now. Let me know. Subscribe. Thank you for hanging around. It's a long video. One of the longer videos in recent memory. But I just had a lot to say. I think this is kind of like a, a pretty good hot button topic for discussion. So I want to hear what you guys think as well. Let me know down below. And it's uh, Monday. So have yourself a good Monday.